Twitter has 313 million monthly active users. And when you post a tweet, your data, effectively your creations, are owned by a corporation. A corporation that will not survive unless their financial goals are met. And that can mean using your data in a way you might not appreciate. And it's not open source, so who knows what's going on under the hood. Huh? Feels a little odd, doesn't it? Yes. So what is the solution here? Well, there's a lot of people that have tried to create Twitter alternatives like app.net, Diaspora, Hello, and Peach. And there's one currently growing in popularity called Mastodon that's both free and open source. No, it's not the metal band. It's the prehistoric extinct animal, which obviously can't tweet. So what sound does it make? It actually toots. I kid you not, when you post on Mastodon, you post a toot. <laughs> the project is relatively new, starting in August 2016. You can check it out on GitHub and you'll see that it has over 2,000 commits and over 170 different contributors. If you decide to join Mastodon, you'll notice a familiar TweetDeck-like interface that has pretty straightforward design. You can craft your toot here. Notice you have 500 characters instead of Twitter's 140 characters. You can also change your privacy settings on a toot as well as give a content warning before someone clicks to read your tweet. The rest of the interface is pretty standard with your feed from people you're following and the ability to reply, boost, that's what they call retweeting, or favorite. And over here on this column, I have my notifications as you might expect, so I can see when people follow me and when they send me messages. If you want to sign up for your own account, you'll notice the first thing you need to do is pick a server running an instance of Mastodon, you know, running this code. You can create an account from there. You might then wonder, if I have to sign up on a server, am I then isolated on my own network? What if I have a friend that's on a different server? Well, here's where things start to get cool. So I signed up on a server called mastodon.cloud, and so my mastodon address is greg at mastodon.cloud. Effectively, username at server. Kind of just like email, right? So I can have friends on many different servers, and when they toot, I get pushed their notifications from those servers so I can see it on my feed on my server. Hmm. Back in the interface, you can see I can just listen to the local timeline, just the toots on my server, or I can drink from the fire hose and listen to the federated timeline, which shows me all the notifications getting pushed to my server. What's neat about being federated like this is that each server can have its own rules and moderation policy. That way you can pick the server that has one that you agree with. Also, some of these instances are themed to a particular location, interest, or even language. There's even an instance for people of House Targaryen, you know, from Game of Thrones. What's great about having a federated network and hundreds of servers is that if one server goes down, it's not a big deal. It also means you can have moderators per server, so a lot more moderation can be done, unlike Twitter with like their small moderation team for millions of tweets. Oh, and did I mention it's free and open source? There's no company behind it that needs to make money by selling your data, which means it's for the people, by the people, and all that. If you're a developer like me, you're probably wondering what's going on under the covers. Well, Mastodon is running a Ruby on Rails application using React with Redux. It's using Node, Redis, and Postgres SQL. And if you want to deploy it, you can use Docker or Docker Compose makes it easy. Check out the documentation on the GitHub page if you're interested in deploying an instance. What got me excited the more I learned about Mastodon is about how it works with other social platforms like GNU Social. This is another open source social network that was created back in 2010 that also has that same level of interoperability between servers. The reason this communication is possible is because both GNU Social and Mastodon implement something called the OStatus standard. OStatus is an open standard for distributed status updates that uses a series of open protocols. Things like Atom, Activity Streams, PubSub Hub, Salmon, and Webfinger. Basically, it's a standard way of doing this federated thing. If you want to create something new, another social network, as long as you follow these protocols, you can plug in to the big social network and all of these different servers. As Twitter learns to become more profitable, I'm excited to see how more free and open solutions like Mastodon come to affect our lives. So maybe try creating an account 
maybe check him out on GitHub. You can add me on Mastodon if you want to listen to my toots. <laughs> and if you want to support the project, you can also support them on Patreon. Thanks for watching this open source craft explainer video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so I know you're out there and you're interested in more. I decided to go to my kids and ask them what sound a Mastodon would make. Would it toot? I think that animal would make like it's a mammoth with a phone. Yeah. I cut the cheese. I'm awesome.